meeting to order at 7.03. Roll call. Ed Marcus. Sean Harley. Randy Sneed. Erica Parton. Derek Jones. Lisa Mullaney. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes from February the 1st, 2023. Move to approve the minutes from Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from February the 1st of 2023. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Citizens input. <clears throat> Stand, sir, and state your name and address. Bob Byers, 412 East South Street. Good evening. I have two things real quick. Uh, the first thing, I have a question, and I know the town's currently in a contract with and everything, but I've been hearing more and more about large item pickup days with the municipality's respective uh, trash service. Most towns are going to, well, Bourbon has monthly. I don't know how they do that, but they do. Other towns have where they have one day, like Plymouth, I think, is the first Monday, and it is one item per month on that date, which is their normal trash pickup day. I know we do, what, four a year, two and, you know, it's kind of spread out through the year. I, I don't know, maybe the way we've got it is better because there's no limit, so to speak, but I don't know if that's worth looking into when contractual times or amendments to the current contract become available. Um, might be more beneficial, I don't know, maybe not. It does restrict you to only one item a month, whereas our current one, I've to my knowledge anyway, is unlimited. I've never had them leave anything anyway. You sound good. Our contract is up in 2025, so. I just looked at that sheet the other night. Our well, we pick up once quarterly. I think that's what it is. It used to be two in the spring, two in the fall. I think it's they once quarterly now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so when we redid the contract last, I think it was last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think it was the year before. We we had two in April and two in October, and people were mad about that because they were like, you know, you should spread it out more. So we decided we renegotiated with Republic, and we got one in April, one in June, one in July, or no, not no. June, no May, no. All June. One in June, one in <coughs> August, and then one in October. And so we. I like that better than the old way, by the way. Yeah, so everybody seemed happy with that. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anybody complain, and normally, if somebody has a large item, we will refer them to Republic and we will say, you have to call them. If they choose to bill you for that large item, that's on them because it's not covered under our contract. But I do know that Republic has picked up maybe one item, you know. Some probably. Yeah. I, I've never you know, heard. if they have a, the right truck in town, they'll pick up the one, they'll make an appointment and pick up the one item, and they have not billed a lot of people. Doesn't mean they're not going to bill, you know, you can't call them all the time and say, hey, I've right. got one item this week, one item next. You know, but if you've not called before and you've got just an item, you've bought a new couch and you need to get rid of the old one, sometimes they'll make an exception for that. Well, so. okay, well, maybe one, one of the comments I heard <laughs> from a resident was uh, I wish we had more days in the warm months. I was just sitting here yeah. myself. I was going to ask Bob what his thoughts were on it and then it was kind of going through my mind. You know, we could have one quarterly, and I think it's a good idea to have one every quarter. But what if we added a second one in the two quarters in the warm months? And well, that'd be even better. Because that'd be only two more a year. Exactly. 
Okay, well, and when we renegotiate, right, right, we'll probably right. do that, but not in 2025. But that seems to be what residents talk to me about that, and that's just, you know, in my small area of the world up there. Um, it, it, it was which we had a couple more days in the warmer months, because that's when they're working outside or they're, you know, doing something where they have a lot of them bigger items per se than they do in the cold months. And, and there are some stuff in the cold months. But I just, I think that instead of adding a bunch of data, maybe we'd be better off to walk into this and maybe get a proposal on adding two. When we're up for renewal yeah. in a couple of years, we can. And I knew it was early. I knew we still had a few oh. years, but I had the idea. And while we're on the topic, I think they've done a great job in recent months. I think they've done fantastic. I did not get my increase. trash picked up today, so. <laughs> They missed a few today, I noticed. Well, I guess for the record. When but they... I'm not complaining. I am not. I, I, I guess not I haven't. Been. I am not complaining. <laughs> I should say my, my little area <laughs> hadn't had problems, but it's they like. It's gotten a lot better. So are you bragging? No. Oh, I'm just, just saying I, I, that he said that he hasn't heard any, and I, I will tell you today. I think I one not. thing uh, I noticed. A lot of the cans were getting blown over by the highway uh, yeah. this morning. My guy, guy got out and picked it up. The guy was having to stop and pick up the cans. Yeah. So you know, that I noticed that. Today. And, and you know they've got. Well, they picked up all around me, but I, I, so, but what they have done is they are more communicative with us. Like today, they gave me an address and they said that there was a can blown over. He tried to get out of the truck, but two dogs came up and started attacking him. So he got back in his truck. That can did not get picked up today, and he they gave me the address. But that's, that's because that's, there yeah. were dogs out there. You know, they they communication so is key. That's they are get they are being more communicative. They they got a hundred yeah. times better, and yeah. they are from my business relationship with them. I can tell you they are extremely uh, more staff than they used to be. Yeah. But so they're doing good. My other thing, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody. But it was brought up last month, and I'm pr I don't know the status of it. I would just like to speak my personal opinion as a citizen of this town. <coughs> I have an issue with the idea of dissolving the park board into the council's role. I will discuss that as well. Yes. That'll, that'll be brought up later. Yes. My, my fear is just ruined. Thank you. My fear is there's a group of people over there. They seem to do a pretty good job. Our park system is one of the best. And... While the council ultimately, at least if I remember right, appoints every member to that board as they do several or all others, I don't think the council has the capacity to take care of everything. That's why those committees exist. And not that you guys aren't a good group of individuals, but the more, more people you have, the more ideas that come about and the more things that flourish. And, I think that dissolving the park board as any other board within the town would be a detriment to that specific entity or any other entity of a board you wish to dissolve. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here? For... It doesn't happen very often, but I agree with you, Bob. Well, there's a first. <laughs> I do. I don't know if this is a good time or not. First yeah. name and address. Steve Burrell. 11865 Olive Trail, beautiful Plymouth. Okay. So I'm here tonight to see uh, if there's any talk about the rental inspections. I'll be honest with you. I have rentals in Plymouth, La Paz, everywhere. So I don't have any here in August, but I want to see where your guys are going with this. Because if you adopt something, more likely Plymouth is going to adopt it. And the next thing is going to be Calvert, then it's going to be La Paz, it's going to be Brigham. So we want to see where you're going with this. I'll, if you don't mind, I'll let Chuck, would you mind taking that? At this time, we are not looking at any rental inspections or registration or anything else. Will we look at something in the future? Perhaps. Right now, there's nothing in the near future that's coming up. It would be advertised uh, for public hearing uh, before we do that, so you'll be able to read that in the paper or get noticed that way. But right now, we don't have anything in the works for rental inspections. Okay. Talking just residential? So, residential. Two different entities there. Yeah. Yeah. Residential. Yeah. Residential. Yeah. Or commercial. And what was your last name again? Gurriel. 
How do you spell it? Yeah. G U R I E L. Thank you. I got it close the first time. Okay. So I we're going to do a little looking into this because I, I was aware that somebody had called in, and maybe you're the person who called in today. I called earlier today. Okay. <clears throat> um, we had talked about this, I'm going to say, two meetings ago. Um, and was provided, I was provided a little bit of documentation about what other towns and municipalities are doing uh, around the state. And I hadn't really looked into that. I still haven't really dug deep into this, but I dug 15, 20 minutes and I found some interesting things and you might want to take note of this, but um, there is actually <clears throat> a set of statutes that's found at 36120 and it talks about it's it's residential uh, leasing <coughs> through municipalities and a, a method or a way to inspect them. That is separate and distinct from what we call the unsafe building laws. And I already knew that those existed and that we could, um, if we had a, a building that had a nasty roof or something like that, that um, and if a homeowner said, nope, you're not coming in, um, that there was a way for the town to be able to do that through a court process. This also provides a mechanism to do that. I've not dived into this to see exactly how this works, but I do see that there are some other towns that, that do that. Um, I, I think right now the town has operated in the past largely on a, I'll, I'll say a consensual basis, where if there's an issue, the town would send out a letter, and I think those letters are ongoing. Um, but I think it's the majority of the property owners in the town provide consent. So if there's ever consent and there's no issue about having an ordinance or any procedure or anything like that, you can always come in uh, and do an inspection on a, on a basis like that. So that's where that's at now. I think right now the town operates purely on, a, on an issue of we send out letters, homeowners, or I should say homeowners, property owners, give consent, but there are mechanisms for the town to be able to do that if the town wants to do that. On a one by one basis. Not just a blanket ordinance. No, no, it would be a blanket ordinance. Okay, as I understand it, it would be a blanket ordinance that would basically cover all of the rental. And these are residential rental properties under that code site that I gave to you. Was um, that for inspection or for registration? Well, I think maybe both. And again, I have not dived into it, but I do know that there was an inspection process that I refer or I saw when I referred to those statutes. Uh, Plymouth tried that on uh, the landlords in Plymouth, and Sean Teresi looked it up and said there's, and, and well, I don't know what the date was, but if, if the city did not have that <coughs> ordinance in, uh, in place already, the city could not start a new registration process. I do remember seeing a date in there, like yeah. 1984 or something or 85, like that. correct. Um, if the city didn't have that ordinance in place by that, you could not just start up a registration fee. Well, to make it mandatory, or the inspections mandatory. But again, I haven't dived into it yet, but um, again, that code site's 36120 if you want to take a look at that. Okay. You, sir, state your name, please, and your address. Al Eisenhower, 14680 Lincoln Highway, Plymouth. I'm here with Steve also. We're um, members, or actually president and vice president of the Landlord Association. So we're just looking at what's happening, trying to make sure that it's very frustrating when it's like there's meetings and then stuff happens and you just go, oh crap, that's what we gotta do now. So we're trying to be proactive, be here. Uh, I know South Bend passed some regulations a while back and what happened was a lot of the landlords were like, screw this, we're out. And they just sold their properties and they were done. So you gotta be careful about what, how restrictive you get with whatever it is you pass, because that could happen. And uh, it's already, property values are going up, assessments are going up, taxes are going up, everything's going up. Right now, if you're a renter and you go to move in someplace, NIPSCO says, hey, you need a deposit. Water department, hey, you need a deposit. So a lot of these people, they gotta have first month, deposit and then all the deposits so it's a lot of money to move into a rental so if you guys pass something at another cost we're going to pass it on because we're not taking the hit so if you want affordable housing i would say try to keep keep it affordable if there's really a problem where landlords are being slumlords 
that's a different issue. But I think I think most of the people I associate with, Steve included, we're trying to keep our properties up. You know, there's only a certain level you can get, and I don't know if you've ever been in the landlord business, but some people will come in and literally trash whatever it is you've got. And then we end up with thousands of dollars. If, it, if we're lucky, it's a thousand or two thousand. If we're not lucky, it's five or ten thousand dollars when they move out. So we're trying to, um, you know, collect our rents, do everything we're supposed to do, also keep it affordable housing, but uh, more regulations we have to abide by, the harder it is to keep I, those affordable. I think that, uh, and I'm, I'm not necessarily speaking for everyone in the board because we've had this a little bit of a conversation, but I think what we're trying to address is we're not trying to run landlords out, we're not trying to tell them how to run their business. We want affordable uh, rental housing, but we want safe and, and something that, you know, People can live in that they don't have to worry about the conditions inside the home, you know, the fire, the smoke and fire detectors, you know, the, the carbon monoxide detectors. The last thing we need is a house where it's unsafe and we as a council fail to act and we know that there's, you know, an unsafe home and there's four children in it and they die in a house fire because right. we didn't do anything with it. So, I mean, I, I think our, our whole, on behalf of the council, I think our whole intention here is to address those unsafe conditions not right. tell you how to run your house right. I feel like, like that's a whole different anything. thing because it's almost like I was a contractor or still am and OSHA says hey you got to follow these guidelines well that's great when you're in a steel mill but when you're on a residential house no blanket across the board everybody has to stand by these rules and regulations so if you're looking for a few small houses that are not good slumlords Okay, do something then, but don't blank it. Every, but I think the, every the question the, and the issue would be how would you single out those three or four, just using that number, three or well, four homes? Okay, here, we're going to pass an ordinance that covers your. Well, how, are you gonna, how are you going to find out about home. those homes, though? I'm sorry. How are you going to find out about those homes? Someone's going to complain. So you go, you target well, those people who complain. And I think part of it is through the inspections as well. I think, yeah, I think it's driven by the inspection process, and I think really, I'm, I'm, all, the, I'm, I'm not, all the town. I'm not opposing that. I'm just telling you, whatever you pass, it has re repercussions for landlords, and then those repercussions will go on to the renters. But I'm just so, saying, I think it's just an expectation of compliance with current zoning codes and ordinances. It's, it's not asking for anything over and above that. One of, one of the biggest complaints I hear, <coughs> and Ed spot on in my opinion, of at least how I feel, what he, I just add to, one of the biggest complaints I hear, and I could probably speak for most of us up here, um, are rental units. And every, every community needs them, okay? Nobody's disputing that. But you have rental units sitting next to the people that own their properties and take care of the property and these people in these rental units are not keeping up their just mowing the lawn they they just get trash sitting around their house um just just general aesthetics makes a person that's got a nice place next to them you know, right i agree may, you know okay. and these landlords and, and i'm not singling anybody out i'm saying landlords they're doing they do nothing to make them tenants comply with our ordinance and our planning book and that kind of stuff. I think that's where it's all. I don't think anybody is up here looking to, you know, charge fees for anything. We just want to have a way to ensure that, you know, and those residents that are renters, they are members of our community at that point. You know, we want everybody to be safe. You know, and that, that's, right. I think, where we're coming from. Well, I, I mean, already know other investors that go, I'm not going to Argus because they're not, they're not an easy town to deal with. So if you want more of that, then, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody, I'm just telling you, I've heard that before. So One thing that I think is important, and not to interrupt you, but I think it's important is when you're talking about passing this along to the, the tenant and, you know, you're, you know, they've got the nips going on, we're not talking, from my understanding, we're not talking thousands and thousands of dollars of, of an inspection fees. I mean, we're, I think we're talking a very minimal inspection fee and a registration fee. We're not talking, you know, even... Five hundred dollars. I mean, we're talking something very minimal just to, to establish this. And, and I understand the fees are minimal, but if the kickback is, hey, that outlet doesn't work or whatever, and then we got to come in and fix them in so many days, that's 
That's beyond. Anyway, I don't know. We're, I, we're, not, we're not doing I'm telling you what I know for, for South Bend. For selling, it was a big we're looking deal for safety South issues. Bend. Why as a homeowner wouldn't you want to make sure that everything is safe in the house? Would you, you mean well, you're vested in that home. Why would you want it to catch fire from electric? I'm not saying I would. I'm just I'm throwing the question saying, out there. I'm just saying when we when we rent our houses, we try to do everything we do can to do, but we're not in them, so we don't know unless the customer or the renter calls and says, "Hey, the outlet in the bedroom doesn't work." We don't know, so I mean that'd be great if you could help us. Uh, well, I think follow up on those I things. It's a very good point. I think so. This is twofold. That as part of the you know is not only. So I'm not Help us ensure I'm that really things are safe. Also, we can be report negative. you and you would know, hey, I'm just telling there is you, something wrong. From my it. standpoint, we're trying to make sure that it doesn't start here, go to Plymouth, go to Argus. And, and we're, not, we're not at all trying to, to um, run anybody out of town. We're not at all trying to make it that nobody has a place to live. That's not the case at all. We're just, our right. biggest concern was safety and the conditions mm -hmm. inside the homes, making sure they're safe for people. Well, I would say look for, a, look for a, not a blanket where all... Because I don't feel like, uh, as a landlord, that we all are that person. Well, but there still should be some some basis. I mean, there should be a minimum at that point that, that establishes that. And if you're or maybe you're just trying to make government bigger. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so, so to fix, I think there was two issues. You probably read the paper where you saw that. Yeah. So the actual issue that night that we are tackling, we have some downtown buildings that are in zoning violations. So we're actually requesting to do inspections. We have some fire code issues. Those were the commercial buildings we were actually going and looking at. What you just talked about tonight is something, I don't even know if most of them have heard anything about it or know anything about a residential inspection. Okay, well, we that's why we're here. It. We're trying yep. to be proactive. We haven't pushed it that We don't far. want that, and so, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to share. This is from my yeah. side. If I don't share it, you guys don't know. So no, and I'm sure if this goes further, there'll be more meetings, don't okay. you worry. If, so. if that does ever happen, if you would contact Steve and myself, we would love that. We'd love to try to make something As that's a matter agreeable fact, to everybody. We discussed this, one of the, my uh, concerns and one of my things was that all of the renters or the, all of the landlords were made aware of what we were discussing and let them have the opportunity to speak at any meetings we had regarding this. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'll just share with you as, as a landlord, Renters are very good at taking their problems and turning them into our problems. Absolutely. And they, um, they're they not always truthful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you get phone calls, sometimes what really happened was something totally different. But anyway, but we, we, try we can turn that around and say what you're hearing about artists being not, you know, not fun to work with or not easy to work with. Those are people that well, probably yeah. turn their yeah. problems into ours they're, and are turning around well and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm that, to, you I'm know. Not trying to, I'm just telling you what I hear. Yeah. And that's that's hearsay. what I'm saying. It's hearsay. You know what I mean? And, the only, and I, you know. I'm sorry. The only thing I hear about Argus is how utilities. <laughs> but we actually have the lowest electric rates in around. If you go back to the water, water that's coming and you want to know why? Because so. everybody here gets one bill. One bill. One bill. Your tenants in Plymouth get a water bill. bill, then they get a separate electric bill. So they can be just as much as they are here, but they're two separate bills and they don't put them that they're together. So I've again, I've it's fought perception. this forever. All our residents get one bill. But yeah, I, water, sewer, trash, it's all on the only thing it doesn't cover is NIPSCO gas and internet if you choose to have it. And yeah. it but the landline nice. became, like I said, we haven't. That okay. was an idea. Nothing well, went good. further. Yeah, so I don't think, but it's still by all means, if this goes any much. further. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. We're finished with citizens' input. We'd like to move on to old business. Uh, at this time, attorney report. Where's Brandon? I don't know. It's electric or water that went on. Um, just a couple things to let you what? folks know about. Um, one, we've got some, uh, there's just a couple minor zoning amendments that are going to be coming down to shoot. It starts with the plan commission. That's kind of going to be up on their agenda, the meeting of March the 7th, I believe. Um, and these are a few minor tweaks. Um, and then you're going to hear about those on the 15th of March, so long as they pass and, and get a, a favorable recommendation from the plan commission. The other thing is that we do have, this evening, we have the opening of the mowing bids and the mowing specs. 
And as far as I know, we have one bid. One that bid. Part? And okay. it has not been opened before. I just opened yeah. it three minutes <laughs> ago. Um, but it was a bid that was received January 26 of 23 at 1247 p.m. from Albert Hanselman of A&J Lawn Care LLC, DBA Premier Turf Solutions. I'm not aware of any other bids? None. Okay. And also, just for the record, and so that it's in the minutes, we did publish notice of these bid specs being published in the paper. They were published. We have the affidavit of publishing back on January 20th and the 28th. And tonight is the night for bid openings. Tonight's the night, guys, we open the bids. The next meeting, uh, we would basically make a determination about those so they have some time to take a look at this and, and do what you want to do about checking references or whatever you want. Um, but again, this bid is for the 2023 mowing season in the amount of two thousand, or I'm sorry, twenty-two thousand dollars from Premier Turf Solutions. Twenty-two even. Twenty-two thousand even. And from month, what month to what month? April to um, November. This runs from April fifteen to November one. Thank you. It also looks like a certificate of liability insurance. Looks like most likely a letter of reference or recommendation. Maybe I think two of those uh, that are attached are to you those. Still bids. Want this yes. That's true. <coughs> and that is you, sir. Correct. And I'm over last year for you. Right. And he did a great job. I'd like to make a motion we table it. We need to, mm -hmm. just because we can't make a determination concerning to what we published until the next meeting. But we got one bid, and you guys can obviously take a look at that. Table um, until the next meeting. I'll second. second. <coughs> so we just hold it to the next meeting? Is that you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second to hold the bid to the next meeting. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> That's all I had to report. <laughs> motion to accept the attorney report. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to accept the attorney report. Any further comments on that? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Other old business. Uh, I want to say something. Uh, this is old business about after. Uh, I had some problems and some things I looked over, and after that, uh, I really want to apologize to the you know, park board and to the town council about talking about dissolving the park board. I, there were some things that I didn't quite understand, and they got straightened out, so I'm, I, I realized I made a, quite a mistake with that. So again, as far as I'm concerned, this dissolving of the park board is closed and doesn't need to be brought up again. Takes a strong individual and a good man to apologize in a public setting such as this. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm glad your issues were resolved. So that's that's the end of that. I guess under other old business, Randy, I, um, Corey Bowman had handed me that order. Order. There, yeah. If you want to bring that up regarding the Kinsey property. Okay. This this is. Uh, Do I need to read the whole thing or just kind of, well, this is the Kinsey property over here, right? Across the street. This this is an order coming from, um, it doesn't say who it is. Carmen from. Post, the attorney? Yeah, it's coming from Carmen Post. She's okay, Carmen Post, the lawyer, yes. Basically helping out the town because they had a conflict on that thing. Right. It looks like she is moving that thing forward. So the order states uh, what we're trying to do. It's got the address and everything's correct in there. And it says that the... Uh, that the town of Argus Council orders that the above described premises remove the following public nuisance. Two Chevy trucks, a boat and a trailer, a camper, and other junk scattered around and located on the premises. Is that the one where the uh, garage like exploded? And she's given them 60 days from the yeah. date of this order. So we have to sign it and put it. Now, Mark and I talked about this today. Yesterday. Yesterday, the fence. They're starting to put a fence up. Yeah, they're, they're also starting to put a fence up. 
I don't know what so we'll do to live with this. Should we cite that since we're already doing this, or should we just let the attorney know? You're going to have to let her know about okay. that. Okay. okay. Did they, did they pull a permit on it? Yeah, did they pull a permit? We don't have that in place yet. Yeah. That's, that's the zoning amendments that I just talked about. get a fence better. Kind of like a so he says the order becomes final 10 days after the notice has been given to the individual. So then, then they have uh, 60 days to clean it up. So we will sign this and date this tonight. We have a motion to approve the order as written. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the order as written. Any further comment? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We will take care of that. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. Uh, park board open. Um, as I thank you for waiting on this. Um, I we had met. I had met with the park board president, Mark Dean, and um, we had actually scheduled an executive session to discuss this. Then Mark twisted his hoof um, and ended up having to be off for a while. But. Um, the, the whole discussion was we had uh, five applicants, I believe, or five letters of intent that were submitted. We, um, as a park board, they had uh, discussed, they were all provided with those letters and it was uh, unanimous that the park board members, um, and I am in agreement with them, that uh, they had uh, recommended that the uh, town council, as you all know, we make the appointment, uh, had recommended that the council um, move forward with the appointment of um, Damon Binkley to that open position. Uh, Damon did prepare a very nice letter of intent. Um, it's getting married this year, um, teaching at the school. I think it'd be a very good added member to the park board and will bring a lot to them. Not that the others that had expressed intent would not, but I think <coughs> she would, uh, at this point in time, I think Damon would be the best fit. Just to add to Ed's uh talk about Damon here. Uh, Damon is a college graduate from, uh, and he uh, specialized in, I used to call him a turbo counter, but it, it's, it's, bio, it, it, he's a, it's a biology. Uh, Marine biology. Wildlife biology? Uh, I'm trying to think exactly what his degree is in, but, but it has to do with aquatics and things like this. Mm -hmm. And so with the park having that beautiful pond there and everything, Damon would be a great guy for this because he's got a lot of knowledge and and he understands the, uh, the effects of the park and also the wetlands back there in the back, which, uh, you know, we have for our uh, wild animals, I guess they are. At the there. time when the um, uh, wild flowers and things were planted and the, yeah. the things were done in Folker Park, Damon worked for the firm that actually did that, right. and actually installed yeah. all that. He's got a very good knowledge of the parks and system. He's involved with soccer at the school, and I think um, I, I think it'll be, it, I, I don't think, I, I'm very um, confident that it'll be a great um, addition. Well, it is an appointment of the council, and so long as there's not more than two members of the same political party, so long as he lives within four miles of the corporate boundaries of the town, then he's good to go. No, he lives over here on Indiana Avenue, so... What's his political opinion? Never asked him. Uh, well, I can't... I think I know what it is, but I, I can't... I'm not asking. Yeah. I have one yeah, question, if I may. Go ahead. Does Mr. Binkley have any other um, town interest? I mean, is, is he on any other boards, or he's not an employee, or he doesn't have no. any conflict of interest in no, being a conflict in that position the school. with vendors? No. Okay. He's a science teacher at the school. So. Okay. Is there is there any, and I think that at one point because, um, I mean, I'm leaving, I'm a Republican, I mean, he's taking my spot. Um, even if he were to be a Republican, I think, I mean, I don't, there was at one point, I think if the, you had to do the qualifications of the applicants or whatever, I think there are not qualifications, but um, I, I don't remember how the statute read. Here's the deal is that basically if there was a point in time when we did, there's a process for a waiver of that by resolution, okay? But short of that, I mean, we do need to make sure that we fit into that category. He fits into that category of not more than two members of the same political party. 
Well, I will tell you right now, I believe only one of your park board members has ever been a Democrat. <coughs> but again, there is a waiver process if this is an issue, but it's something that we need to tackle before he's appointed. Okay. So let me do the waiver first. Yeah, definitely. You can take that back to the park board then, since you're the liaison for the park board. Well, <coughs> and the, the, but the council would have to do the waiver, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, like that's is, what we're going to do. I think it is. A, yeah. And we did this, I'm going to say, four, five, six years ago for one individual. I would move that we table it until, and, and then prepare a waiver based upon that until the next meeting. I'll second. Nobody else's. So we, we do have a, a motion and a second to waive or to. Uh, table the appointment of Damon Bankley to the park board uh, waiting on a waiver to be taken care of and then we'll bring it up in the next meeting. Any further comments? If not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We also have an opening on the redevelopment. Uh, if anyone's interested we get a letter into the uh, town clerk and uh, there's an opening on the redevelopment. Maybe. Ordinance 2023-01 salary ordinance. <coughs> just over a month. <laughs> this is the one that we. So I changed the heading. If you look, it's changed. I think Derek will be happy with that one. Um, so it says the First Amendment, but it's changing the. Original yeah. ordinance. I don't like that ordinance either. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't pay attention. I took your advice. That's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, this ordinance is again back to the emergency medical technician or EMT, non exempt, part time. We've changed the uh, salary for them from, a, uh, from $14 to $22 per hour and uh, and be effective February the 1st, 2023. Okay. And make a motion to approve the 2023-02 salary ordinance amending ordinance 2022-14 first amendment. It's 2023-01. Just to Well it says 2023-02. I know. It's 2023-01. Derek just pointed We know that. Out. <laughs> so even though she just what was presented to me, so my motion is okay. 202301. Right. And that's to waive the rules so that you can pass it? No, I just made a motion on the first reading. On the first reading. Okay. We have a motion and a second to waive the rules and pass on all three readings. Is, mm -hmm. No. You know, to, just to waive the rules. Mm -hmm. no. No. no, just to no. pass it on first just reading. Pass just pass it on the first <laughs> reading. All right. Any further comment? If not all in favor, say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Nay. I'm just going to redo it and just pass it all tonight. Four to one. Fine. <laughs> Three to one. Three to one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I found out what you did to the CPA school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I want to be the. I want to be right. <laughs> so we'll bring it back to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do? I just want it to be the right one when it gets here. Oh, man. So I guess we're going to... It's already passed, yeah. Yeah. No. We'll just go... We'll bring it back to the next meeting. We're going to have to bring it back in the next meeting. Yeah. We passed it once in the next meeting. We two we'll we'll do the other two in the next meeting. Because it's still... It's retroactive. It's still back in February. Uh, yeah. Whatever the date was. Right. Okay. Meeting ordinance 
2302 solar rate amendments? Yeah, I can pick this up a little bit. This is something that um, came from Solville. Uh, I think Jamie was working with them. It's to do with basically <clears throat> primarily the school and their solar issue or their project, I should say. Um, there was a very small tweak. It's found on page two. Uh, there's a, and I don't even understand the numbers, but it's basically amounted to a tweak from a 1.85 to a 2.15. And that's the reason for the rate change. As I understand it, it will potentially save the school a significant amount of money. Yeah. Um, it had to do with this. We, they had a project over there. We changed the size of the transformer that they needed. So we actually downsized it. So when we did that, that rate had to be adjusted. So that, that's the reason for it. So here you are. Mm -hmm. And it has the right number. I'd like to make a motion to pass unanimous, to pass unanimous consent for ordinance number 2023-02 mm -hmm. to you pass on all three readings tonight. No, we've got to make a motion. That's what I just did. I've got three minutes of consent. You mean to suspend the rules? Oh, yeah, I've got to suspend the rules. Or the Congress. Congress. <laughs> Make a motion to suspend the rules for ordinance number 2023 02. Unanimous consent. Is it good now? It's good. I'll second it. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it used to be so easy. I wasn't going to second it. I don't like the unanimous consent. Oh, no. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> all right. We suspend the rules and pass on all three readings. Ordinance number 202 the solar rate amendment. Any further comments? If not all in favor, say aye. 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 Hooray. Now, Unanimous. Now you have to make a motion. Yeah. Well, here. <coughs> you can make a second motion to pass it. They did it all. They did it all. They did it all. Three readings. You can't. It has to be the most two. You well, got to suspend we, the rules first. We got to yeah. suspend all three readings. All right. We got to start all over again. No, he already suspended oh. the rules. Okay. So I'll I'll make a motion to pass move. ordinance number 2023-02 mm. on all three readings. A second though? We have a motion and a second to pass the ordinance 2023 <laughs> 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 on all three readings. Any further comment? If not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> new business. Aye. Any new business? No. All right, department head reports, please. So back to the, the Kinsey order, and I don't know if, if we need to do this or not, but when my communication with the attorney, she said she was going to send another one to Lisa for, with the, um, the actual owner, which would be Kinsey's mother, I think, or grandmother, mother. And she didn't get one, right? Not yet, but I didn't check my email. If it came okay. in late this afternoon, well, that I came probably... a few days ago. Oh. So, but I don't know. If, do we need? I guess I'm asking. Do we need another one for, or is it just good for the? Does that make sense? Well, that would be a question for Carmen. Well, because I, if I remember when I first did it, I did it for the owner, and you said you had a. You, you see where I, I don't want to. I see. I'm, I'm so then sure. we went to the kid that lives there. Then we went to Carmen. I just don't want to go over again. Is this addressed to the, the residents or the property owners? This is addressed to the, the, the resident. Okay. So I think, I mean, from what I've seen of this, her intent may well be then to file suit against the residents for violation of various zoning or ordinance procedures. So it's, it's fine the way it is then? No. Nope. Is it possible that she's going to then send the owner of the property a copy of the order as well? It could be. <clears throat> and that was her intent to send that to Lisa as a copy of the order? I know. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming yeah. her. Yeah. We'd probably have to talk to attorney. Well, she said she, and I don't think so, because she, in, the way, in my communication, I understood that she was going to have it, I would deliver this one, since it was in Argus. 
And since they, the other was out of town, um, she was going to find an alternate way to deliver it via the sheriff's department, I guess. So I assumed it was a second order. I, I just have not received one, but I think we'd have to call the attorney and find out what her intentions are. And, and other than that, the only thing I know, like Sean mentioned it in the last meeting, that our new hire, Richard Springer, completed the perf stuff. We're just waiting for him to get the okay. We're still waiting. Yeah, we'll be probably waiting for another couple of weeks, probably. Really? Unless you can call down there and harass them again. I'll harass them. That's all I have. <laughs> Yeah. So he's, he's not doing anything yet? Well, he has, I mean, no, not for us. I, I don't think he's unemployed, if that's what No, I, that's not what I meant. I, I, I meant for the town. No, he's not doing anything for us yet until he's hired. Until we get to go ahead. Let me know when you get that. Uh, I'll have to bring it to someone on the police, well, two people on the police commission. And we'll have to send it back if I remember right. And we'll have to. Yeah. Let me know when you get that stuff so I can you get that all processed and then I can let the council know too. Yeah, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. On your report, is there, is there anybody that's reporting the mileage on the Dodge truck? Because it's been No, that'd be the SRO. You talking about the SRO truck? No. Okay. They hasn't been doing that. I said it's just been the same on yeah. the report. So. Yeah. I mean, I can have him start coming in, but you're looking at. Few miles every month. He's not driving anywhere. But it's parked out there, right? Out here in front? No, I mean out by the PD. When he's done, he parks it in the PD. Yes. Somebody could look at it. It's I can look at it if you want. I was just get... curious what the mileage. Just keep up. Well, it would be good to have accurate mileage on the. We can, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I, I agree on that. Yeah. Talk about <coughs> vehicles, Corey. Yes. Uh, Talk about causing trouble with the charger that they had. Yeah, the lug nuts? Well, the front tire, you're aware of that? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I did tell uh, Joseph to check all of the vehicles, yeah. and I okay with Jane and too. I guess they had, like, didn't even have the right lug nuts on it or right. something like yeah. that? I just had regular nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it just had a regular grade shit. 5, had, had a grade 5 bolt, a grade I, 5 nut, then a regular I went to this, it couldn't, I would assume it was from here and now. It was. But, so anyhow, just so you know, if, if, if he's, I don't know how he's going to do it, it's up to him. I so thought he took care Jamie, of it. Jamie's schedule his time, but he's to check all the vehicles. Oh, okay, yeah. Check the tires and stuff on them, make sure everything's correct. Yeah, that's, you can't believe that a shop will even end up a rag it out. I just, I can't lose my mind. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't surprise me. Anything, but I mean, I've seen dealers do stuff too. Yeah. So I and I can't prove. I don't know if I could. I, mean, I guess we could prove. I just don't know. It, if that's it's cool. water under the bridge. Right. It's fixed, and now it, you know we're just going to since they had uh, the other vehicles in there at one time or another. That's why I'd like. But had both charged, and I just did an oil change on the yeah. other one today. Yeah, we should be all caught up with your vehicles as yeah. of right now. Has everything in the building and everything okay oh, great. still? Everything great. I think Joseph is going to come and install soap dispensers or something like that. Yeah, we'll wait for him to come in. Yeah. Are we ever going to put anything on the front and tell everybody what that building is? They're still be ordered. Three weeks. Um, are we still I just, I just talked to him. It'll be about three weeks. Did, did you know what they were for? Hmm. Oh, that might have been just before you came on. Uh, they're just letters. It'll say Argus Police Department. We are going where are I put the wooden sign up front though still? No. No? I think so. I thought we were. I mean, we pulled it out. We put it out back. If we want to put that up, we can. But we'll have letters on the whole front Whatever. of the building when it's done. So. Whatever letters are there. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. If we're not going to use it, I'll probably scrap it then. We can wait till we see what the letters look like when okay. they're on. I mean, we can go with that, that route too. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing they'll sign if somebody is driving. It's, it does tell me the police department right there. What's the sign? <laughs> well, I mean, unless they're going to see if they buy it. Yeah, but unless you're going to buy it. It's not like it sits 500 feet off the road. The milking parlor sticks out so far. You can't well, see it until you get right up. We had cat stuff delivered to the building today. 
through the library, 119 West Wall, which is our address, so I don't, I have no idea. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. It's changed by now, the library. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's cat food and cat tree. Is that the end of your report? Nah, that's all I have. Okay. Utilities? Hey, I have a few things too. Um, <clears throat> they've been doing pretty good on the buildings over here. Just got a, just a couple minor things to finish up on the police and the electric storage. And then they, they got the roof on over here. He, he thinks that's going to go pretty quick getting that wrapped up um, on the second building. So um, the other thing we fixed on the back side, there was a pillar there. That holding up the awning on the on the back side of the EMS building, they they tried to fix that, but they couldn't find the block, so they ended up just tearing the whole thing off and building it all brand new. So um, it looks good. I drove by it. Now they just they're gonna put a cap over it so water doesn't get in there and blow that out again like it did before. A um, couple other I have several quotes for you guys tonight. One was the. EMS garage doors that you asked about, Ed, uh, there's two quotes in there, one from Superior and one from D.C. I sent it to all of you. I don't know if you want to do anything with that tonight or... I, I would move that we go ahead and proceed with the Superior garage door quote. To, it's the cheapest of the quotes, 10350 I believe. Yeah, good. Doors. And the doors are, from, from everything I looked at it, I mean the doors are identical to the doors that are on there now and to what was quoted by the other. And I, and I called them and actually they sent me the doors and I mean, they do look identical to what's there, so. Is the, the I, I know assume that, that the window kit. The windows are included are in the superior. They're insulated, they're insulated windows. Yeah, they're and there are four, there's four windows in that door. I'll second the motion. So we have a motion and a second to accept the bid for the two new EMS doors from Superior door, uh, $10,350. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So that was the okay, Jamie. <clears throat> the second one is that parking lot quote that I discussed a couple meetings ago uh, for the police building over there where we're going to move the alley. We kind of shaved that down a little bit just to make the parking area concrete and then we'll we'll come back and asphalt it or something later where the um, where the alley will move to. So well, that quote was 15840. And there's there's quite a bit of work there being done. I, I think I said you drawings of how that's gonna look. Okay. My question is on the front there where it says replace, is that on the sidewalk that they're going to replace? Areas or what is that? There's there's several spots on ten that are cracked. Okay. So the, okay. those panels will be replaced and down that's through there. In that. That's all included, and then there's going to be a front walk to the police building too. Okay. Now does that have to be the ADA? Yes. So we've got it. we're going to cut the curb out and get it get the grade right and everything. Okay. Yep. And that's all in this. It's all all that's in there. I moved to approve the B&B &B quote, 15,840. We'll second that. We have a motion and a second to accept B&B's report for replacing the concrete in front of the new police building, the amount of $15,840. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> then the last quote I have tonight is for the water truck, for the utility bed on that. Um, I showed you three quotes tonight before the meeting, and I recommend we go with the um, Terry's truck equipment on that quote. I think that's probably the most reasonable one for us, and that's an aluminum body on that. Yeah, that's cheap. That's the best one. That, that bed in the W.A. Jones, they're the identical bed. That's, that's identical to the $22,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the other this, one's a fiber. This is a, this is a box, right? Yeah. Those box? Yep. Okay. It'll have, well, no, it'll have doors on the sides. It's a utility bed, a okay. body. So, so these are good? Yeah. Yes. So is the one from Terry, is that, you say it's aluminum or is that fiberglass? No, it's aluminum. Okay. Well, then it's going to add. I, yeah, I'm good. That's fine. 
Yeah, it is a lot of yeah, what I was just looking at. Too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, 17, 8. 17, 8. 17, 8. 17, 8. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just quote you add 850 on here. So that's for the spray on bed liner. And that'll do the, the top rails and the whole the whole box inside. So we're 17, 8 plus the 850? No, that's with, that's included. That, that 850 is in the 17, Yeah, eight. yeah. Okay. Can't go wrong with that. No. Nope. I'll make a motion to approve the bid for the water truck uh, bed and water <coughs> truck equipment for seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars. We have a motion and a second to approve the bid for Terry from for the water truck uh, <coughs> utility bed from Terry Truck Equipment Incorporated for the amount of seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the other thing I have is, and I know I've talked to most of you about this, if not all of you, the, the lift station out at the Folker Park that we're having problems with. Um, we pulled some kind of material out. We think it's some kind of concrete or, or something, but where it came from, we don't know. So that was why we had to replace that whole line. Uh, we were running that 8 to 12 hours a day is what that was pumping. Since we replaced that line, that runs about... I think it's an hour, hour, hour and a half a week now. Wow. So that, that's how much restriction there was on that. How in the world do you think I, I, I don't know. And I know Ed and I have talked about it quite a bit, and that was 500 feet, and there's about an inch and a half in there. So, I mean, it would have to be several five-gallon buckets dumped down into there. So oh, I, I just, I don't know. It, just, it, it had to happen in the last two years because... There's new piping there from the lift station when we moved it. It was in that piping. So, that just doesn't make sense. for the record, it was not from my pool. My <laughs> pool was not connected to the city sewer. It's got to be your fault somehow, Ed. <laughs> but we're going to send out letters to everybody in that neighborhood about, you know, putting things down the line or, or whatever. But, um, can we have done the whole town? In, in no, there no, be? this is only there's about seven houses on this line, so it's so that's the one, one of those that had to come from. It's not one clear in the back, no, right? No, right, it's the one that actually moved out of the back of Bruce Stoffer's right behind Stoffer's yeah. house, yeah, yeah, okay. So, I don't, I don't, blows my mind. it's fixed, it's working great now, so. And that that's about it. We did get all the lights and changed the exit signs through all the buildings. So good deal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Economic director. I don't have much more. <laughs> you do. You had all kinds of red writing. Oh, I always have a lot of stuff, but not. So who who died on that twenty acres? So you said we was looking at that twenty acres, but the parent died and. Now it's oh, fine. the property behind. Uh, we own the 20 acres. Okay. That behind so, the so that 14 acres then? That was well, a 64 acre parcel. Oh. We <coughs> it okay. So I'm still actually doing this for working on that with me. He had talked with them originally. So well, I, I was. But <coughs> took me for a Well, I thought, I, I thought I thought it died on it. Well. So. That's that. I mean, we've got stuff. What do we got coming up? We should, we're waiting on the paving bids. That's kind of holding up another project we're working on. <coughs> I should have those at the end of the month, the end of February. We're hoping to put those out to bid. So then once that happens... Hopefully. Well, in any time now, we'll, I'm waiting on that call from Shannon. Hopefully we'll have good news there so that we'll get approved. The, the guy that was that here with her, Mark, if you remember that, gentleman that was here with her, I can't remember his name, but he he took my telephone and he said he would call me. He would yeah. call me. He oh, he might. I figured she would know before any of us. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, that was supposed to be in February, so hopefully that's a good report. And, but, Is that it? That's enough for tonight. Plan director. Inspections. Yes. Send a letter out today <clears throat> to the downtown businesses. Um, the week of March, the weeks of March 13th through the 24th, we're going to um, just take a look inside, make sure that uh, no ordinances are being violated. 
not there to inspect um, what they've done, what they've got, or anything else. We're looking for people living in basements um, on the first floor, which we have ordinance against the, both of those. And that's one of the big things we're going to look at. The fire chief is going with me. I'll go with you too. Right. So you said that's the 23rd and the 24th? No, the 13th, 13th through the 24th. There's two weeks there okay. that we told them that we would be looking. And if they had any specific days or they needed an appointment, we would be glad to do that. So that's the big thing we have coming up. Okay. And that's just to ensure safety of any residents. Right. So that's the end of the uh, department heads. Make a motion to approve department head reports. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve department head reports. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Claims. Claims. Okay, before we get into the claims, I just have a couple of questions, um, or statements actually, not to, and I'm not overstating, but the 10350 that you just approved, that's going to be almost half of your EMS budget, just to let you know. Um, we have the money, I'm not saying we don't, I'm just putting a bug in your ear. And the 15840 are we taking that from community development or because we've only put so much aside for that also? So we have the money. I'm not saying we don't have money. I just want the council <coughs> to be aware of where the money is being spent from. How much you got the PD fund? Are you talking which one? The law enforcement fund? I don't know that you can use it for that. For parking lots and stuff. Yeah. I think. You got a restriction on that? Yeah. yeah. The, well, I was thinking doing a cost share, maybe doing that. You know, yeah. Some, some other things. Yeah. Maybe. So maybe. The, the doors is coming down the block? The EMS building fund. Okay. And that we, I think we budgeted like 25000 So I want to let you right. know that right. this is a huge right. chunk. You know. And we still have the side doors coming out of that, too. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they were three. Three thousand. I think you said something. Yeah. Like that. But I'm just saying, you you know, you only budgeted twenty five for the yeah. whole year, and we're spending it all in the first quarter, well, or yeah, a lot of it. So just, yeah. I'm just making you aware. You guys said you wanted to be more aware of where things are coming from. Money. So, yeah. <laughs> and the, you know, with the community development fund, I think you only budgeted fifty. I believe it was fifty. So I'm not. You know, do you want it to come out of the general? Is it, you want it, we could take it out of the CCD, but of course we've drained that fund pretty quickly, so. How about as the clerk, you recommend where we do it? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't have money, and well, I'm not I, saying, I, I realize you know, that so. I a lot of fun in your opinion. Yeah, I mean, I would probably take it from community development, and then if you need more money, we can always do an additional appropriation at a later time. But I just wanted your, you guys said you wanted to be more involved in where the money was going. So. And this is your, that's your area of expertise. And I, would I mean, it is. I respect your opinion. To it's me, it, it is community development. You are developing the community. We, uh, we didn't overly, we didn't get very aggressive with the general fund anyway to where we could do it, you know, apart from the community development part of the general. I mean, it's probably better to take it all out of that other one right now, right? Well, this is out of the general fund. It's the, the community. And that's not you know, the not CCD and stuff is on its own. So this this would be the community development fund that is in the right. general. Yeah, that's so, but I that get confused because they got so many a lot of, different accounts. Right. That's a lot of what the money that we give Mark, you know, to kind of do some stuff oh, with. So I just wanted to let you know. I don't know. So everybody, I don't spend money like everybody. No, thinks no, I no. Use. He doesn't. <laughs> that's no, not I'm, what I was I'm, implying. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm not. I just. I come in the morning. It's the first thing I think. I fell asleep. Somebody just doesn't get it. Who knows? Is that on tape? Okay. I, I, I'm just. 
You guys that, said that you wanted to be more aware of where and, money and, was coming yes, from. Yes, so. that's why I said I, but I... And the other's coming from utilities, so of course that's fine. But I just wanted to nope. say I my just, piece, and I that was it. wanted your input. So then later on, when we need to do an additional appropriation, no make we'll it say. We'll know. Right. I didn't know. We will we'll, so. we'll grab that. Okay, oh. so the claims this time are from January 17th. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're from January the 18th until February the 13th. That's what they are. Because we could not close out claims before the first meeting. So I told you this one was going to be huge. And yes, I will correct it, Ed. Sorry. Um, so... Um, yeah, but the checks and stuff on there are correct because I put those in myself. Um, but the total dollar amount is $635,664.57. But you got to realize that's a month, a total yes, month. Yes, that's a total month. It's not broke up, so. And it is January 18th to February yeah, 13th. It's, well, it's January 17th to oh. February 13th. It's okay. corrected on the agenda. Okay. It's just not it's correct the on the correct. Okay. plain okay. docket. For some reason, I didn't change that name <clears throat> when I was changing everything else. But the numbers on there, the check numbers and the total amount are correct. Make a motion to approve claims dated January the 17th of 2023 to February the 13th of 2023 in the amount of $635,664.57. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to accept the claims from January 18th to February 13th to the amount of $635,664.57. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.